and it's about a, a millimeter um, long. Welcome to Steve Gorvan's Wall of Fame. Pictures of the first holes made by humans on Mars. That's a big deal to him because his company designed the drill bits that made them on the Spirit and Opportunity rovers. But there's one picture here that could be a big deal for all of us. I came into the science room and there was only uh, one other person from NASA headquarters there. He was at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab a few days after Opportunity landed in 2004. And she comes over and she says, takes a look at this. The next thing we did was we both just looked at each other like this. I went, and in our minds, I think we were saying, wow. Wow. Now, I'm not a scientist. I just play one on TV. But that sure looks like a little worm to me. Or is it a rotini? Look, what occurred to me, of course, because I'm an engineer and I can say this, is that we were looking at a fossil. Alas, Opportunity is not equipped to study fossils. Lacking any other options, the science team ordered the rover to move on to the next rock. So it could have, it could have stumbled in, in dumb luck or whatever, could have stumbled on literally the Holy Grail, the Holy Grail on Mars, uh, with a key question about life and could do nothing about it. Yes, that's, I think that's a fair statement. We could do nothing about it. Bomber. Pictures by themselves at that sort of scale will never really be convincing evidence of life. We need more direct chemical and biological tests. Astrobiologist Chris McKay would kill for the chance to conduct tests like that on Mars. He spends much of his time in some of the more life-forsaken places on our planet. I found him in Chile's Atacama Desert a few years ago. The idea? Draw the boundaries of life on Earth so we can better understand where to look for it out there. So let's assume for a moment Steve Gorvan's Rotini worm is indeed a fossil and is proof of a unique strain of Martian life. Then what? Leads me to the conclusion that life is common in the universe. If right here in our own little solar system life started twice, well, that means life is a natural phenomenon, it's happening everywhere, that what we see on Earth is not a cosmic fluke. If that's true, where are the aliens hiding in our galaxy? Astronomer Jeff Marcy is hot on the trail. He is the world's leading planet hunter. We're really searching for our own roots out there in the galaxy. He and his team have found about half of the 300 plus planets we know of beyond our solar system. Right now, technology only allows them to locate gas giants like Jupiter. But that will change next spring when NASA launches a space telescope designed to find other Earths. You know, you think about our Milky Way galaxy, you look up into the night sky, our galaxy contains 200 billion, with a B, stars. There are, in fact, hundreds of billions of galaxies within our entire universe. So if each of the stars within our galaxy has, say, one Earth, uh, that means there are hundreds of billions of Earths just within our galaxy alone. But here's the rub. Our galaxy is 100,000 light years from stem to star. Let's say we found another cushy birth for life halfway across. It would take 50,000 years to send the alien civilization a signal. Another 50,000 for a response. You wouldn't be able to tell a joke and have the punchline be given on at the right timing. So for now, the scientific hunt for aliens is focused at the pond scum level in our celestial neighborhood. But it's a start. Perhaps we should send another robot to the site of Steve Gorvan's worm and take another look. You've got to have a lot more than just one uh, little image from a hole that we dug a couple of years ago. But having said that, that could be it. I do, I will admit that, that I often say, what the hell is that thing? Wow. Miles O'Brien, CNN, New York.